Our reality is but a dimension, the uppermost layer in a tower of mirrors. Beneath it are the many reflections cast by our reality, similar but not entirely the same. A staggering number of worlds, lands beneath a dark sun, a world of three moons forsaken by the gods, realms long forgotten, and countless thousands more. You are about to enter one such reflection, a world still recovering from a magical apocalypse, a place where magic is regulated, goblins trade their wares throughout the lands, and the north is dominated by giants. Today, the sun rises over Hymurin and the Wilderin. This is An Acorn's Journey, a DMD story. And now, Chapter 3 of An Acorn's Journey, a DMD story. The rooms are fragrant with lilac and lavender. It's furnished comfortably with two large four-post goose-down pillows, linen sheets, a pair of comfortable high-back chairs dominate one corner of the room, flanking the smoldering hearth that warms the space. Upon a small desk along the wall, a basin of perfumed water and clean towels away anyone who wishes to wash the stink of the day away. And I will be doing that first. That of can use that water after you. It's poison. You have your own in your room. Nobody drink Moqui's bath water. Uh, the basin is large enough for you to pretty much put your entire tiny body in. And I will do so. Take a bath. I'll just wait till morning, shift into cat form, and bathe myself with my tongue. You find that sleep comes quickly with full bellies, sore muscles, and, for most of you, a recent bath. You settle into your beds. They're comfortable, simple, large, and soon you fall asleep. In the middle of the night, Moqui, you hear a voice. It says, Oma, over and over and over again. Oma? Oma. The voice is in your head. It takes you a while to figure it out, but it's not something coming to your ears. It's rather something inside your head. But there is a direction to the voice. And what is that direction? On a coat rack in the room in the far corner is your traveling cloaks, some of earrings gear, and the messenger bag. I will walk over to the messenger bag. As you approach the messenger bag, you can sense warmth coming from it. Much, much warmer than it was before. It's almost radiating the heat now. Not quite as intense as the hearth in the room, but still warm enough so that as you approach, you can feel the heat. I'm going to rouse Earring. Earring. But you held the messenger bag earlier. Was it warm? I never held the messenger bag. Oh, well, you should come look at it. It is warm. Go over to it. Do I feel any... There's there's noticeable warmth coming from the messenger bag. You could tell even as you approach it. I go to touch it or get close enough. Is it too hot to touch? No. Or, no? I'm going to pick it up, bring it back to bed, and cuddle with it. <laughs> it's warm. <laughs> you did just wake him up after all. <laughs> He's a cat. I just mm. stare at him as he does that, blink a couple times, and shrug it off. You return to bed and are soon asleep again, and you hear the voice. Oma. Oma, Oma, Oma. Keep tossing and turning until you can get some sleep. Which you cannot, because the voice in the head is persistent. Comes faster and faster. I'm going to get up and search the messenger bag to see if there was anything we may have missed in it. You dig around in the messenger bag for a bit, determine that there's absolutely nothing in the messenger bag. There's no side pockets or anything. It is just a, a bag with a simple clasp that holds it shut. There's nothing fancy about it. It's a worn leather bag. It's stained with the wear of travel and use. It looks like it's fairly old. Are we going to hatch a baby squirrel? Lunchtime. As the earring is drifting back off to sleep, I'm going to reach over and try to remove the acorn from his presence. It's easy enough. It's getting kicked. Once again, look over and see if I can make any sense of the runes or anything on it. The runes are now illuminated. It's like there's a, a white light behind each of the silver runes. The silver in the runes, it almost looks like they're moving in a serpentine fashion. They ripple. They don't move across the surface, but within the runes themselves, the silver appears to be undulating. I will try to trace them out as they, just to get, number one, to get a better you know, mental image for it, but I will try to trace them out as, as they're going around. You watch them for a while. It's mesmerizing, but then the voice comes again. Oma. Oma. Oma what? Oma. Oma what? 
getting, you know, saying it louder. And there's a, a thump from the inside. Hold it up. Give it a quick little shake. It sounds like there's something rattling and bouncing around inside of it. Well, if something's inside of it, I'm going to try to see if there's a way to pry this top off. What are you going to use to pry it off? I will do primal savagery and use my claws. Okay. Make a strength check. 20. As you're trying to pry it up with your claws, it spins slightly. Let's see if I can spin it some more. As you grab a hold of it and put all your effort into it, it spins and spins some more and spins freely until the cap falls off onto the floor with a large clang, which awakes you with a start. To see Mokui sitting on the side of his bed, feet dangling, and between his legs is this golden acorn. Mokui's facing you. You're looking at him through tired eyes, and this head starts to come up from the golden acorn vessel. On the floor is the cap. I slide my hand underneath the pillow where the handle of my battle axe is. I wait, watching. So what do I see inside? You see a small child emerge from the bottom of the acorn. One gangly leg is hung over the side as it puts its foot on your thigh and helps hoist itself out of the acorn. It looks human. It doesn't appear to have a gender. It's a pale white color and totally naked. But you can't make out any sort of indication that it is male or female. I drop it. Hands go to the side. I'm like, and I reach for my scimitar just in case. It looks at you with these big green orbs for eyes. There's no discernible irises. It's just green orbs. It blinks a few times and places one tiny hand on your calf as if to calm you. It doesn't seem to have taken any notice of earring behind it. In any of my travels, have I seen or heard of anything that would describe what you're... No, you've never seen anything like this. You've never heard of anything like this. And I'm going to look over to Earring's bed, and do I see if he's still sleeping? Oh, no, he's awake. I'm, s- I'm sitting bolt upright. We have... I can see that. Earring says to the child... Mokui's not the mama. It turns around and looks at you with a curious look on its face and turns back to Mokui. Not the mama. And says, Oma. I try to get the being's attention and I point to it and I say, Oma. I point to Mokui and I say, Mokui. Point to myself and I say, Earring. Oma. As I point back. It pays very close attention to you, looks to Mokui, looks to you and shakes its head no. Point to Mokui. Oma shakes its head no. Do we have a window in our room? Yeah. I'll point out to the, out the window and just go, Oma, just waving my hand out towards the window, like towards outside. It walks over to the window, hoists itself up on the windowsill, looks out the window for a while, pauses, climbs back down, shakes its head, and points to the east. And you hear the voice again that says, Oma. I think it wants to go in that direction. It's still nighttime? Yes. Sun rises in the east, so let's wait till morning. I'm going to leave the room, go down to Longway and Madri's room, knock on the door. I'm going to sit bolt upright, because I'm always on alert. <laughs> yes. The acorn has opened. There was a child inside. You might want to come on down to our room and see. I'll be there momentarily. Okay. We'll stroll over to Madre's bed, give him a little shake. Knock on his shell. Yeah. <laughs> dink, dink, dink. You rang... <laughs> Madre, I think we may have an issue. I think Earring is coming down with the plague because he's hallucinating. Hallucinating? What do you mean? He said a child came out of the acorn. Uh, right. Let's go take a look. I don't know. Maybe he's sleepwalking. I don't know. At least let's guide him back to his room. I just don't want him getting into harm's way. So I'll step outside of the room, see if he's still there, or is he... I would have went back to the room. All right, so head back to his room. Is the door open or closed? It's open. Okay, step in. Well, he made his way back to the bed. Just kind of survey the room quickly. I'm sure I'll see, you know, Mokwe sitting up on the bed. It's very similar to your room, almost identically. Mm -hmm. As you enter the room, you swear the child looks larger. It's sitting on Mokwe and appears to have taken a liking to him as its head is rested up against his chest, seemingly unfazed by the poison your skin oozes. Your background says something about disliking children particularly, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I just don't really care for children, so I am going to gently slide slide them off my lap and go over there. 
See, and I'll point the earring. He will care for you. The child looks at earring and then looks at you and then scoots over closer to you. Mokwe, what have you done? Mokwe didn't do this. I didn't. It came out of the, the, the acorn. And I'll bring it over now. Here, and I hold up the child to you. I'm not going to take the child. I'm not going to reach for the child. Did it just, it was in the messenger bag. Did it just pop out of the acorn? It came out of the acorn. He's got it. He's holding it up. Why Beans. is the bottom of the acorn on your bed and the cap on the floor when and not in the closet where I, it was earlier? I was reading the runes, and then the cap fell off. Did you discern them? Did you somehow Insight break? Check. break <laughs> did you somehow break the yes. uh, <laughs> break the enchantment that was I on did, there? I I don't know. Fifteen on my insight check. Uh, you've known Mokui for a while. He's curious. You we all we all know Mokui for a while, and we know he's curious. <laughs> Which is why I'm questioning him. I was tracing the runes, moving the, the top, and it's it just started spinning off. And you felt inclined to continue this motion. I. That's a yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So you. Re- it started spinning off enough where it fell off the top and onto the floor and woke me up. Oh. Madri walks over to the child. And I'll pick him up. <laughs> and takes the child. And then starts inspecting the child, like turning it, looking at its ears, looking at its head. It's rather ugly. It's got a weak beak, no shell, Mm -hmm. no webbing between its feet. It (sighs) is a pale color, maybe on the green spectrum slightly, but it's a rather rather unattractive child. It's not as beautiful as a turtle infant. This young turtle is sick. Let me have the child. Well, to start with it, it has no shell or scale. It's sick. It must be. There's no protection here whatsoever. No shells, no scale. I don't know. what. What is this? It's totally nude, and you can't determine the gender. It looks genderless. It's a copy. We get that. Is it so sickly we might want to consider putting it out of its misery? It did point to the east. It said Oma. It spoke? It said Oma a number of times. I tried to see if that's what its name was, and it indicated it was not. Pointed to the east, said Oma. It's the middle of the night, the sun rises from the east, so wait till morning. Has it actually spoken? Yes. Oma. Oma. You have heard it in your head, but no words have been uttered. So none of us know that it has said this. <laughs> we don't, we're, we're going on their word anyway, so. So it, it popped up. It, Let me get this straight. Mokui was the only one who heard it initially. Oh, I have not heard it. You, you were pointing, we, that's right. You have not heard it utter anything. Okay. Or heard anything in your head. Okay. So you were accidentally handling the, the acorn, trying to discern the ruins. The top just popped off. The child came out, which doesn't look like it would fit anyways. That's close. And and then it spoke and had enough intelligence to discern a distance. Is this what you're trying to tell me? No, I didn't say anything about a distance. It said you just a said direction. he pointed east. Well, that's a, a, a direction. I climbed up to the window and climbed down and pointed to the east. And I'll say it said Oma to the east. What Oma means, I still don't know. Well, I suppose you should feed it and water it or whatever else you do with those things. And give it somewhere to bed and we'll take care of it in the morning because... We're not going anywhere tonight. Unless, of course, you'd prefer to go trudging in the dark in the middle of the night. Not really. I mean... Then give it your blanket and cur- let it curl up in the corner or something like that. Keep your room locked so it can't go roaming around, and we'll figure something out in the morning. Well, we'll put it up on Earring's bed, give it a blanket, and tuck it in, and then go to my bed. <laughs> I will I will take care of the child. <laughs> when you say take care of the child... <laughs> I'm not going to kill the child. <laughs> okay, I just, I just want to c- clarify... You know, just we don't need child protective services on our butt already. <laughs> um, I'm going to shake my head and go back to my room. Look at Madre. They broke it. I hope they didn't prematurely break it. It the, looks uh, like it was supposed to come apart. Maybe, but may, now? I think it had to do something with uh, Mokwe's interference. But that's just my personal opinion. It doesn't mean it's fact by any means. He did uh, say that it just opened. So. Yes, while he was inspecting the runes. So this whole conversation is going on as if you aren't even there, Moku. As, well, we're, we're, leave, as we're leaving, as we're leaving room. the room. But yeah, I, the door's <laughs> open. You could probably hear everything we're saying. As they're leaving, close the door behind them. Just shake my head. The acorn. What is the make of it? Is it metal? Is it organic? It's it's all metal. It's not natural at all. 
Can I discern a type of metal? The outer coating is in gold, and it appears as though it's a steel container. It is heavy, but not as heavy as you would expect it to be. Are there still runes on it? The runes are still present, but they're dull. They no longer have that vibrant silver color. I'll take the the cap and the shell, and I'll put those in my bag, keep them. And Oma, because I'm just going to start calling it Oma, is bigger? It looks bigger. I'll uh, make it a spot on my bed and then, you know, get back into bed and try to indicate best I can, you know, making an upward arcing motion, you know, and pointing to the east, Oma. It looks at you for a while and then you hear in your head, Oma, and it points to the east. Morning comes, Madri, you're up at your normal hour of the morning doing your kata. Which means I'm up because it's he's, loud. He's noisy. <laughs> you're tending to your, your weapons. Mokui, you awaken, your eyes your eyes flit open in the morning. You look look up. As you look up, you see the face of the child so close, its nose is almost touching yours, and its two big green eyes blink. I am going to, because I just woke up kind of startled, I am going to push it away from me. There's a thud which awakens earring, and you see the child plastered up against the wall, Mokui's hand outstretched, looking like he just shoved the thing away from him. The fuck is wrong with you? Can you at least be happy it's not like a tarisk? It scared me. That scared you? Yes. You know what these kids can do to you? The child climbs over Mokui, walks over, and starts rummaging through packs in the corner. What is it doing? Let's see. Let's watch. It's scattering all manner of things. The contents of, of your packs on the floor finally pulls out a roll of bandages from your pack, Mokui. It starts girding its loins with the, the wrappings. Dressing itself. Okay. And then looks to the east, points, and you both hear in your head, Oma. We will head east once everyone is up and ready. So I guess with that said, I am going to start rousing everybody. And I will make sure everything goes back into the appropriate pack. The child follows you down the hallway. No, s- stay. It stops and looks back at the room. Oma. It shakes its head and points east. And in your head you hear, Oma. I point to the east and I say, and I put my hands out, wait. Soon. It puts its hands out like you did, Oma. And I'm going to continue walking down the hallway, and if it follows me some more, I am going to yell, stay. It stops, blinks again, and I will continue to walk backwards. It continues to walk forward, matching your steps. You hear the argument in the hallway. Yeah. Stay! I'm going to look over it. Madre, just shake my head. You know, we should have gotten him a dog or a cat or a cactus or something so he could practice. I hope he doesn't breed. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's all I can think. I'll go to the door and open it. Did we keep the leash? Good morning, Mokwe. And what are you calling it? I'm not calling it anything. I'm calling it Acorn. You said it came from an acorn. It needs a name. Okay. I'm calling it Acorn. Good morning, Acorn. It looks at you, and you hear in your in your head, Oma. Oh, that's unsettling. What's that? When it mouth doesn't move and you hear uh, it speaking? I'm assuming it, it that's... It. Acorn saying Oma in your head? It's a childlike voice. Yeah, that's probably why I assumed it was the little childlike being following. That's it. Is that is that how it said things? You didn't say that yesterday. I said it said Oma to me. Yeah, n- not in your head. I, well. <laughs> you think that might have been an important point? I was a little taken back. Well, that's nice of you to finally put some dressing on it. Uh, it maybe did, a shirt. It did that itself. Then maybe you should still give it a shirt. I've not given it my shirt. Dash is probably a better closer well, size than I see, am. Well, a shirt would look more like a dress, and then you can put a belt on it, and it'd be a little bit more protected from the elements and a little less likely. It's awful pale and will stand out in the woods. A darker color shirt of yours, since it seems to have a, a kinship with you, would probably be handy. And most of your stuff is uh, dark winter colors, so it would help blend out. Very well. Excellent idea. I'm glad you came up with that. So make sure we take care of that. I'm going to grab something to eat quickly, and perhaps we need to get going, because this is going to draw attention, and it already has, and I would really hate to see anything untoward happen to this little community. I'm going to grab it by the hand and start down the hallway, trailing behind me. It As you exit the room, it turns around, and it looks at, at Madri, and in your head you hear, Oma. Madri freaks out. What is that? Did you just speak to me in my head? As you're walking down the hallway, it's running to kind of keep pace with you. 
you know, it's like that angry parent that has the kid by the hand. Madre, that acorn did that. Acorn. It needs a name. It came out of an acorn. Call it acorn. I like it. But we'll go with it. Yeah, it spoke to me in my head as well. There was it's unsettling. Talk last night about east. Remind me what's that direction? Out of the grove and across the plains? Opposite direction. Opposite direction. Oh, okay. Right. Through the forest and to the coast. Through the forest, at least. I think it's obvious that it's magical in nature. I was assuming the same. There was a giant acorn with glowy, curly cursive squiggly lines on it. And then supposedly it came out of it. That's what Mokwai that, said. That smacks of magical all over it, doesn't it? The center of the forest should have some Valanesi cities. Maybe that's where we need to go? I, I am unsure, but... Uh, as am I. The best of theory is anyway. Well, it seems to take a liking to Mokwe, so... Dash, you awaken. You are spooning a large bottle. It is empty. I will make my way to the bar, put the bottle on the bar, drop a silver piece, grab another bottle... Climb my stool and wait for everybody to come downstairs. So you're sitting at the bar, um, naked, uh, hung over, uh, chin resting on your hand, head throbbing. You hear the creaking of the floorboards above you. Ah, uh, good, they're finally up. Your companions must be awake. There's a lot of loud talk. There's that fast, angry walk that Mokui sometimes has when he gets frustrated. What do you do, Dash? I nurse my drink. What are you doing now that you have the child in your room, Mokui? I throw a shirt over him, get some rope tied around its waist, and have it on the leash so I can pull it behind me. I'm not going to let him put a leash on it. <laughs> oh, come on. No. A little, little monkey backpack. <laughs> no. I will pick it up, prop it on my shoulder. Once it's dressed, bring it outside the room, grabbing my gear. Dash, earring descends the stairs. You can tell it's him by his boots. His boots show up first. If you're naked, Dash, we're going to have a problem. Nope, not me. Close the door, throw on my rabbit skin. As you come out, you see Earring standing there. He's got his gear in one hand. Looks like he's ready to head off. And there's a child sitting on top of its shoulders. My jaw will drop. What in the name of birch pollen is that? This came out of the acorn last night. We interrupt this podcast of an acorn journey to talk about our sponsor. Are you a veteran DM with more campaign ideas than prep time? Yeah, of course you are. Aren't we all? Does your party have a habit of going to the person or place that you would least expect? If they're like my group, they sure do. What if I were to tell you that I could put a team of professional writers alongside you at your desk to cut down on your campaign prep? What if I were to tell you that you could bring them along with you at your game sessions For when those pesky players go off the rails. Sounds pretty good, huh? With Describe, we can do just that. These narratives vividly describe monsters, places, spells, people, you name it. It's there. And there are more than 6,000 of these easy-to-search-up, copy-and-pastable, beautifully written narratives right at your fingertips. I've been running games for the better part of 40 years, and I must admit, I've gotten a bit lazy. I just don't have the time I used to. And I've been using Terrain, which is minimizing my need for descriptive narratives. Stuff is right out there in front of you. Why describe it? When I was prepping for an Acorns journey, a D&D story, I used Describe quite a bit. When you listen, you can hear it. One of the things I like the most about Describe is that if the narrative doesn't fit perfectly with your encounter, it's easy to modify while still sounding really good. I did that an awful lot. I think this makes the more than 6,000 narratives that they have available for you even more valuable. It almost doubles what you have at your fingertips. You should give it a shot. Describe has graciously provided us with a discount for our listeners. Head on over to describe.com backslash DMD. That's D-S-C-R-Y-B dot com backslash DMD. Use the code DMD at checkout to try Describe for two weeks free. Links will be in the show notes. And now, back to an acorn's journey, a DMD story. I get a look of shock on my face out of the acorn. Yeah, Mokui was messing with the acorn. He'll say he wasn't. Who was that? I'm yelling from the back room. (laughs) He was messing with the acorn. It opened. This one came out. So he busted a nut. No, the nut. How long are you sitting on that (laughs) (laughs) Okay. 
What are we going to do with it? Uh, it wants to go east. It keeps pointing to the east and saying, in our heads, Oma. I will look at the bottle, pick it up, take another big swig. In your head? Oma. I tap it. I point to Dash. Dash. Oma. Oma? In your head. Then I turn and look at it and I indicate food, bring it to the bar, see if I can rummage for any kind of food. It, it's shaking its head while you're doing that. No. I'm going to find myself some breakfast, you know, eat it, have it there, let it watch me eat. If it wants some, it can take it. If it doesn't, okay. It appears fascinated with you eating. It will look to the bowl to you, to the bowl to you, to the bowl to you. It'll watch your mouth as you're chewing. Where's the landlady? She locked us in overnight. Dash is here, staying down here, probably naked. She's not showing up till noon. Gotcha. Okay. Remember, we've stayed here before. That's true. <laughs> before long, long way, and Madri descend the stairs with their gear in hand and Moqui shortly thereafter. Head out back, grab some bread, grab some cheese, throw a couple coins on the bar, and quickly grab something to eat. There's plenty to choose from. After your morning meal, you set out on your journey to the east. And apparently we need to go east. We need to go this direction for a couple reasons. Number one, it was originally to deliver an unmolested acorn to the Valanesi to see if they can discern. Do we still have the acorn? Did one I, of you two grab the acorn? I have the shell and the cap in my pack. Okay. Uh, originally we were heading that way to see if we can get someone to discern what the writing was. Uh, maybe it just said, do not open child inside, but that's a moot point now. But we still need to go that way because now we have a small child that popped out of a magical acorn. The runes are still there. They've just dulled. Beware, never take this acorn east. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or something like, don't feed it after midnight, don't get it wet. <laughs> it, just, uh, it will never know um, in time. That's normally where we would be heading anyways. So at least for a little while, it's the direction we need to go. But for the time being, let's head east. I'll point to the east, pointing more towards the, the sun, Oma. You see the, sh- the child nod in the affirmative, and in your head you hear all of you, but Dash hears Oma. Madri's going to take all of the root vegetables that he can find, put them in his pack, and then leave like five silver on the bar. She's got to be used to us raiding her pantry by now. Yeah, it's it's pretty... Uh, and you, sh- it's usually a pretty good monetary exchange for her, too. <laughs> you have you have something of a celebrity status, too, after word got around about your defense of Birch Grove. And there's other mm-hmm. things that you've done for the communities in the area, so you're always welcomed in this in this neck of the woods. Where the folks are familiar with you. As you step out of the tavern, it's a bright, sunny day. You start on your journey. After your first few steps, earring, you notice that the garment that Mogui put on the child is tossed in front of you. Those of you in the group see the child who's still on earring's shoulders. It leans back, naked from the waist up, outstretches its arms, closes its eyes, and lifts its head towards the sun. Well, I suppose if I grew up inside an acorn, I'd enjoy a little sun now and again, too. Well, you guys repeatedly said the acorn was warm, right? I actually tried to sleep with it last night, but then somebody took it away from me. And they said, I'm weird. Is the child warm? It's warm like any other body. Nothing unusual. But not like warm like the acorn was warm? No. Okay. I'll bend over and pick up the shirt, hand it back to Mokwe. Shake it off, put it in my pack. Keep it handy. It might want it back. And... Start heading east. As you begin your journey, you leave the center of town behind, the cluster of buildings that makes up the center of town, and you pass by the rickety old shack of Mudros the Elder, who's sitting outside on a rocking chair. Just his usual pile of clothes appearance. You can hear the creaking of the rocking chair and the floorboards underneath it, and he's watching you pass by and looking at all of you and... The child atop Earring's shoulders. I will stop and bow to him. Morning, venerable one. He nods. Finally, one with a little bit of respect. Glances over at Mokui. And I see you're abducting a child from the village today. How nice. Oh, no. (laughs) Uh, Apparently, this child emerged from the acorn that Mokui was going to bring to you and see if there's something you knew of it. Oh, well... Come show me the child that sprang forth from the acorn. 
folks over at Madry. Of course, perhaps your your knowledge gathered over the, the many years could give us some illumination as to what we're, we're getting ourselves into. Bring it forth. I will go and sit next to Lutros so that he's eye level or close enough to the child. He inspects the child, and opens its mouth, looks on the inside, frowns a little bit. Very strange. It has no beak and no shell or scales. I don't have a beak or shell or scales. You're strange. Dash does not have a beak or shell or scales. He's got wings. It's very strange. It looks in good health. It's a male child, a female child. I I have a hard time telling amongst you. Eyes are very strange. It is not properly clothed for woodland travel. As I pointed out to Mokwe, a shirt was given begrudgingly. It seemed to have cast it off and rather bask in the sun. He frowns and looks at Mokui, squints his eyes. Squint back. Shakes his head. Shake my head. Shakes his staff threateningly in your direction. I take a step back. Does it speak? Apparently only in your head, and has only said one word. And what word has it uttered? Oma. Oma. <laughs> Oma. It's looking for its grandmother in the old language. That's what Oma means, grandmother. Perhaps... But it keeps pointing repeatedly to the east. Well, isn't it clear, even to Mokui, that Oma, her home, must be to the east? Deliver the child to its grandmother, her grandmother, his grandmother, whatever the child is, and you will be free of it. Is Birch Grove to the east of here? No. The same conclusion we came to. Which is why we were already heading east before you suggested we head east. Oh, and do you know what Oma means, Mokui? Grandmother. Did you know that before? I might have. I don't think you did. Do you need to argue with the Venerable One every time we come to town? That is a valid question. Do you? I don't argue. I came here asking you about something, and just like always, I get a little bit of attitude. Must you always have the last word? No. I'm terribly sorry, Venerable One. Uh, Apparently, some races don't understand the meaning of respect. Clearly. We'll trouble you no further unless, of course, you have something else to impart to us. No, I'm glad you stopped by. Did you bring my ale, Mokui? No, you did not, did you? Gramps, here. Hold out a bottle. Do you have to do that and show me up every time? It's only half full. Well, thank you, Dash. He looks at you. No problem, Opa. Looks at you again. Squint at him again. Be gone with you now. You're standing in my sun. Bow to the venerable one and... Once again, start heading off to the east. And in your travels, what is it that you are specifically looking for? Are you still attempting to locate the closest Valanasi city? I personally think that's our best course of action. I mentioned it, and no one has refuted it or come up with another idea. Except for the child who points to the direction of which they want to go. The child that just popped out of an acorn hours ago. Seems to have an opinion. But uh, aside from that, I'm going with my own, and I'm going to head to in the general direction that I know is the closest Valnessi city to the east, or at least large community. Do we know where that is? We've been in this forest for a couple of years now. I'm sure we have, a, even if we've never been there, we have a rough idea where to find it. Yeah, that's in a slightly northeastern most direction, not too far off from the east. That's easy to do just Occasionally make a little jog to the north and continue east and make a jog to the north and continue east. So it's still traveling east, but we can easily move our way north at the same time. I'm wondering if it's pointing towards the sun and not towards the direction of east. We'll know at noon, won't we? Did you guys raid the pantry again? I have I have as many root vegetables as possible stuffed in my bag. So village is riddled with plague and we want to take all its food or a bunch of its food. Uh, Especially since we have no need for their food. Well, it wasn't in. Maybe I'll give it back. I don't know. I was just trying to supply for the trip. I've always fed us in the past. This is true. I'm sorry. I'll go put it back. You gotta start serving some meat, though, dude. Hi, the berries are good enough. Uh, uh. We can hunt for meat. We can also have the berries. I like berries. See? We can hunt for meat. And when you turn into a wolf, you can help us hunt for meat. That's, no, we don't talk about things like that. And I give you the look. Magic, hurry up and return the tubers. You see a very large turtle running back to the inn and drops a small bag of vegetables on the front steps and runs back. And while he's gone, I'll cast good berry and give everybody a good berry. All right, fine. I'll take two and offer one to the child. 
It looks down on it. Give one to Madri. I, 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 Madri will be back. Just give me his. Yep. Yeah, eat it. Here. He made two berries for you. <laughs> it makes a frowny face, and it puts it back in your hand. You've noticed that it's stopped sunbathing, for lack of a better term, and is now constantly looking back to see where Mokui is. I'm not paying it any mind, except just to know where it's at at all times. So you're ignoring the child. Except for when he wants to know where it is at all times. Exactly. Which sounds a bit like an oxymoron, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm staring at the child, but I'm not paying any attention to the child. Or, or is it the other way well, around? As long as I see it in earrings possession, I'm happy. It's not on my shoulders. No, it's on earrings. You travel for the better part of the day. You notice that the child seems to be getting heavier. Not unbearably heavy. It was never a heavy child to begin with, but it just seems to be heavier at the end of the day. When it came out of the shell, it was really small. Really, really small. When I went down to your room and I came back, it was bigger. When I know when I came from our room to yours, it was too large to fit into an acorn, which is why I was questioning it in the first place. As I've been carrying them throughout the day, they're getting heavier. Well, acorn is a seed and acorns no longer a seed and acorns grow. I'm expecting puberty in tomorrow. That's something that Mokwe will have to contend with. I'm not giving it the talk. And neither am I. I don't think we need to worry about the talk. <laughs> I think we need to worry about where this thing needs to go. East. You said it was the middle of the day, right? It's mid-afternoon at this point. You got a relatively early start. Just to rule out the theory, has, has it been pointing at the sun or the direction? I'll point at the sun. Oma. It shakes its head and it points to the east and says in your head, everybody's head. Oma. Everybody but Dash. East it is. Why is it not saying it in Dash's? We don't know that. Well, at least it's quiet. We don't know that. We don't. Because I know that it's talking to me, but I don't know. You don't know what anything is going on in my head. I have no idea. It it starts getting an hour, hour and a half before sunset. I'm going to start looking for a place to make camp. We have one more being to contend with. We do a lot of forays around this area. Do we know where there's a way area or, or an established camp off the road or an area that we've used in the past? So I, I got to think that we have a few of these little spots that we, like, yeah, let's use there. The water's good. Yeah, you're, you're very familiar with the area, particularly Earring, who spends a lot of time outdoors, you know, living and sleeping and doing his thing pretty much outdoors. Finding a decent camp is probably relatively easy. Yeah, and there's camps along the area. A lot of individuals, up until recently, travel throughout the wilderness. So there's established campsites that are reliable. They're close to fresh water. And anybody who travels around this particular area of the wilderness is familiar with, with many of them, from caves to some ruins that provide good shelter to old shacks and just decent outdoor areas that are protected, for the most part, from the elements. Erin, if you could... Pick out a good location for us. I know of a few. Maybe you know of a few more. But I think from this point forward, this acorn is probably still a target from the faceless one. So something defensible from this point forward will probably be our best bet. Agreed. Uh, I will try to find a clearing that has a water source, has game trails, and maybe an easterly facing that allows for sun to get through. You're pretty certain that there's an area, a mile, perhaps two, up the road and just off the trail you're taking. It's a, I wouldn't call it a road, but it is a a footpath. But the footpath is large enough for a small wagon to pass on comfortably. A mile, mile and a half, two miles ahead, you know that there's a set of old ruins that have been used as a structure. There's some, a makeshift roof that has been established by travelers and has been maintained fairly well. So it provides you with some cover and protection from the elements where you can make a fire inside the structure that's been used for sleeping. And there's other areas where you can find water. The hunting is fairly good. And while not at this time of the year, at other times, there's some wild edibles that are easily accessible. This site will do quite wonderfully. I'll take first watch. We should definitely have a watch because we don't know if the child is going to wander. I'm more concerned with something coming after the child. I will take second watch because I can see in the dark and I don't believe any of you can. I can. Oh, you can? Well, someone would prefer to take first. I'll take last. I'll take first watch, but I want to hang out with the child. You do or don't? 
do. I'll hang out with the child. Maddie's well, going to do a kata and try and teach the child well, how to do it. We, we, we also we also don't know if the child's going to go to sleep, if it's going to stay awake. We don't know if it's going to try and cuddle with Mokui. It cuddles with Mokui? Yeah, it might try. I think it considers Mokui its Oma. Oh, no, it doesn't. We know Oma's off to the east, so perhaps in the clutches, I know in the clutches when our young are born, I think something similar to yours, the, the first adult that sees is Yuzi. Uh, there's a bond there. There is definitely a bond. Which would maybe fortify the protection of that of the young. So perhaps when it hatched out of its acorn, seen Mokwe and, and has bonded with Mokwe as the, its protector. Poor kid. Mokwe should teach it something. As this banter is going on, I'm going <laughs> to leave the child in the camp and I'm going to go hunting. I'm going to grab the child by the head and have him sit down and say, stay. It looks at you, blinks its big green eyes, still standing. Perhaps if you asked it instead of commanded it, it's not a pet. I wasn't. And use its name, Acorn. Acorn is a good name. Can you sit Acorn? I had not Acorn. In your head, you hear Oma. It just said Oma. Again. Didn't say anything. Be nicer. Mimic the motion. I go sit on the other side of the fire, watching it. It walks over and sits down next to you. Good job, Acorn. And watches Madri perform his kata. I'm going to lay out my bedroll and go right to sleep since I'm taking third watch. Going to scan the area, see if I can find any little uh, squirrel holes, rabbit holes, take it over for the night, come out wearing a new skin. Give me a survival check. 18, so that's 20. Well, there's a couple burrows that look comfortable enough. Going to go up to the first one and head down. Is there anybody in residence? Not presently. I will find that little, like, section of leaves and old fur and curl up. I have an 18 on my survival for a hunting. There is a lot of small game in the area, particularly one of the large rabbits that's indigenous to the wilderness. Not one of the large sentient rabbits, of course, but... I will attempt to hunt some with my bow. So, make an attack. Make an attack roll. That's another critical failure. That your arrow does not fly true. You miss, and the rabbit dashes off into the wilderness. I will attempt to hunt another. Make another survival check for me, please. That is a seven the trail runs cold and you decide to just sit with your back to a tree and wait wait for a little while then nothing happens i'll go and try and find another one give me another roll survival yes please 22 you sit for a while and almost feel like you're dozing and then you hear some rustling in the underbrush a large rabbit pokes its head out and starts sniffing about i'm going to attack it eight I'll give you that one, just because. (laughs) You catch the rabbit with the arrow. It wounds the rabbit, and the rabbit is limping about, so you're going to have to dispatch it by hand, but... That's not a problem. So you walk up, break the rabbit's neck. It's a good-sized rabbit. It's slightly larger than a large cat. After you gut it, you skin it, you walk back to the camp with it around your neck, around the back of your neck. I carry it. Oh, by the back legs? Yeah, I carry it by the back legs, and I I bring the fur with me as well. And what is the size of the fur as compared to the child? The fur is enough so that it could drape over the child's shoulders at night or during the day, should it be cold. Once back at camp, I'll try to fashion it as either like a tabard or a cloak for the child. Earring returns with dinner, a large rabbit, and a large rabbit skin, long ways sleeping at the moment. I will prepare the rabbit over the fire, cooking it, eat it. While that's going on, I'll fashion the the fur for the child, and then I'm going to go to sleep. You do that, the group eats. I assume Dash is going to make his appearance when he smells food. (laughs) Oh, finally. So your group eats and retire for the evening. Dash in his his burrow, at present still unoccupied. Who's taking what watch? Madri has the first watch. Erin has the second. I'll I'll stamp with Madri for the first. Longway has third. I'm in a burrow. So night falls. You can see stars peeking through the canopy of the Wilderin on third watch. It is still dark. You're sitting by the fire. The Wilderin is still, unnaturally still. You can hear the crackling of the fire, the gentle snores of your companions. It's unnaturally quiet. I'm not going to sit next to the fire. What are you going to do? I'm going to walk the perimeter outside the firelight. I have dark vision, 60 feet, so I can see out for a ways. But if it's that quiet, I'm just going to slowly pace my way around camp and leave the fire to smolder 
I don't want it blazing because I don't need it to backlit. I just need enough coals just to be able to start a fire tomorrow morning. So I'll bank the fire, let it smolder, and work my way around camp. Dash, in the middle of the night, you hear some scratching, some snorting noises. As you lift your head, aroused from your sleep, you see a pair of glowing red eyes moving down the tunnel of the burrow towards you. I slowly snake my short sword out of the scabbard, crouch down in a, and wait to pounce. It appears as though it's stalking you. It's a large creature. It's very dark, though. But you don't have dark vision, do you? The distance between the glowing eyes is quite long. So you think the creature is probably about as big as you. Perhaps a badger or some other form of creature. Long way. Yes. Too late. You become aware of the hulking form as it slips silently from hiding. This is perhaps a faceless one, but far larger than you have ever seen before. This time, it sneers as it approaches you. Two vicious weapons at the ready. And we'll leave it at that for the week. Join us next time as the adventure continues on An Acorn's Journey, a DMD story. Thank you to our cast, Frank Whedon, Ben Petrie, Bill Robitaille, Louis Aponte, Sin Morse, and your DM, Scott. A special thanks to you, our listeners. You are why we do this every week. We'll see you next time in the dojo.